in 2010. A man and his crew started a podcast on the internet, but they were distracted by real life for a challenge they couldn't commit to. This crew promptly escaped from real life to the, the internet. Today, still wanted by real life, they survive as podcasters of fortune. If you are bored, if nothing else can excite you, and if you can find them, maybe you can listen to Attack of the Awesome. Hello, welcome to Attack of the Awesome, where we make geeky and nerdy look awesome. I'm your host, Mike, and along with me are my co-hosts, the Rosen Hacker. Morning, everybody. Pugsley. Lon. Hello. And Gomer, the renting thespian. Yo, how are you doing? I got hit by a bird. <laughs> what? I will explain later. Okie dokie. Uh, Alright, so we've been gone for a little while. Way too long, actually. We've been on hiatus since our last episode. And uh, we're back. Hopefully not as long as last time. Yeah. So we are back again, and uh, this time we got a awesome, awesome guest, as usual. And he's taken up the title card drawing world by storm. He is the master of title card drawing, known as Andrew Dickman. Oh, God damn it, again? Hello, it's great to be here. How are you doing? It's so great. I just came to your country five days ago, and I'm, uh, I'm very glad to be here on your, your uh, little talking cast. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Oh, we're going to do the wacky foreigner thing now. Great. <laughs> <laughs> you foreigners are so wacky. You'll never know where I'm from. Mm. Where will he be from next? Our first segment of the podcast we hop into is... Around the web, where we talk about what we've seen around the web, whether it's a video, picture, or just something you thought was awesome that was posted on the internet. Who would like to uh, start it off? Me, because I have something funny. It's the key of awesome. They have a new parody out, and it's if uh, I don't really care for the band One Direction, but they parodied them, and I think this is hilarious. Well, I've got that one, and it's not up yet. It should be up by the time this podcast airs, though. It is the second half of my World 8 run in Super Mario Bros. Lost Levels, and some people apparently like the fact that I bitch and rant and moan every time I get killed in that game. <laughs> Surprised <laughs> I didn't keep a kill count. <laughs> so I was like, holy shit, so something to go check out. That's cool. Um, all right. Uh, you know what? Since uh, we've gone for a while, and I, I owe this guy for helping me set up my blip page. I give my shout out to Stefan and Newtrack of Animated Analysis. Their show is right. way, way better than mine. So go check it out. <laughs> <laughs> of course. And um, I should ask the guest, of course, Andrew Dickman. Have you seen anything awesome on the internet lately? Um, yes, I have. I should probably actually. I should probably note that it's a. Uh, it might be more of a awesome on the TV, because uh, um, I watched uh, uh, the Craig Ferguson show uh, this week, mm -hmm. and they had a promo because he's he's going to Scotland, and in, uh, or he's doing a show. He already did his show in Scotland, but they're airing it in May. Uh, the promo was this song by the. Uh, by the Imagineers, mm -hmm. and the song itself is called Imagineer, and I thought that was probably the most awesome song I've heard in a while. So uh, if anyone out there is interested, look up the Imagineers' Imagineer, because that's an awesome song. Yeah. 
Can I, I saw that promo too. I thought that was really awesome. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And, uh, of course, I go last, and I'm a sucker for short films, and I love how these fans make these more awesome films than Hollywood does. So, I was on the internet, and I found a, like, short fan film called Pac-Man. Of course, Pac-Man the movie. Huh. And, uh, sure, <laughs> I've seen, uh, movies that took the subject of Pac-Man in the past, like, they imagine, somebody imagined Pac-Man as, like, a vigilante, like Batman. Someone imagined Pac-Man as a monster to the ghost, like a horror film. And this one I saw, which is actually the better of them, is where they imagine Pac-Man as this government project, and Pac-Man is this, uh, void little thing that eats up, like, all the garbage, oil spills, and anything else that government wants to use. And everybody's like, what's, the, what's this project about? Uh, we don't know what the project is about. And it's called Project Yellow Spear, Sphere. And the CGI graphics is amazing in it, too. Hmm. That reminds me, I should watch the Mega Man fan movie again. Um, that was pretty neat. Oh, there's that one, but there's another one that came out recently, too. I think it's, like, Mega Man 10 fan film. Really? Uh-huh. Mega Man X. X, that's what I mean. Uh, yeah. X. Okay, X. Not 10, but X, okay. Yeah, you were talking Mega Man. You have to differentiate. X. If you, if X. X, say X. X. <laughs> X, damn it. David. Uh. <laughs> You're speaking before a Mega Man connoisseur. Yeah. I kind of figure that because. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> 
I got it! Get it right! Yes. I slapped myself. Which, which is interesting, because I listened to uh, Nerd to the Third, and they were talking about, like, different things that could be made into different mediums or whatever. And Dr. Gonzo's choice was a Mega Man X anime. And I listened to that, and I'm like, you know what? I have to agree. I think it would be really good. Well, they've already done it a couple times. But basically for the games. Right. Well, <clears throat> that was the Around the Web segment. And we hop into the next segment called Attack of the News, where we talk about our respective fields in the news, whether it's movies, movies, uh, video talk games. About <laughs> video games. Movies. God damn it. Or man. movies. And anything random on toplessrobot.com. Since I talked about Pac-Man, I should start with Pac-Man because Disney is making a 3D Pac-Man TV show. Wait, what? Yeah. 3D Pac-Man TV? Oh, yes. Uh, Namco Bandai is partnering up with a rad productions with 41 Entertainment to produce a new TV show for Disney XD. Oh, God. That channel. Uh, the show will be called Pac-Man The Adventure Begins, which probably means it's a prequel. It'll, it will air in 3D, which probably doesn't mean we'll get the experience of the madness of the Pac-Man kill screen. If you know what I mean. <laughs> And the show is currently set to debut in fall of 2013. So we have a year to worry about how good this thing is going to be. Exactly. I'm just trying to imagine, how can you come up with a backstory about a game where you're just a yellow sphere running around eating dots and avoiding ghosts? <laughs> I don't There know. obviously have been attempts if there's a ton of fan films about it. <laughs> exactly. I guess. You never know, he could actually be a government experiment. Exactly. <laughs> that would make it interesting. <laughs> That'd be the weirdest Pac-Man Akira crossover ever. <laughs> they would call it Project. I came up with the idea when I looked at a pizza. <laughs> <laughs> uh, man. Uh, speaking of television, which is pretty much the theme of my news. Uh. You are all aware of the BBC Sherlock Holmes series, right? Mm -hmm. Heard of it, yes. And uh, CBS is actually doing their own Sherlock Holmes series. Oh, Lord. And uh, guess who gets to play Watson? Oh, you know what they hmm. Who? Lucy Liu. What, the, the what? What? They're having a female Watson. Uh, Lucy Liu, I'd watch that. I, I, I was like, really? That's a shock. But see, all of a sudden the BBC... Yes, invoking Rule 63. <laughs> yes. But the, uh, the whole story of the series is uh, that uh, Sherlock Holmes is a former consultant for Sher uh, Scott, Scott Yard, whose addiction problems lead him to a rehab center in New York City, just not a rehab, Holmes lives in Brooklyn with a sober companion, Joanne Watson, a former surgeon who lost her license after a patient died while consulting for the NYPD. That's that's what the show's going to be. It's, and it's going to be called Elementary. Creative. Exactly. Very creative title. Elementary, really. Holmes, what is this in your pants? Well, elementary, my dear Watson. It seems that whenever I look at you, this growth in my pants seems to start rising. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Steve Moffat and the whole BBC crew that produces Sherlock Holmes is kind of like ticked off that CBS is actually doing this version. It's like, how dare they? <laughs> and in that infliction, how dare they? Yeah. How dare you? <laughs> How dare they rip off our idea from the public domain? <laughs> exactly. I was like, really? It's just a public domain character they can, people can use. And aren't you aware it's copyright to British people? 
<laughs> uh, and lastly, Sabrina the Teenage Witch gets her own superhero movie. Yeah, I heard about that. Superhero movie. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> she's a superhero now. Yeah, she. Uh, <laughs> they just so. That's kind of like Cars too. They're spies now. This is Sabrina. She's a hero now. <laughs> exactly. They describe it as a live action film with a origin story in vein of Spider Man about a young girl who comes to terms with her remarkable powers. So wait, it's not a Sabrina like movie, it's actually Sabrina. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. That's hilarious. That is. Yeah, the movie will be edgier, and the cat will be a transformed prince creating a unique love stories for Sabrina? I just read that now. It's like, oh my god. Will, will he be voiced by the voice Norbert from Angry Beavers? That's all I care about. <laughs> oh, I hope so. Um, Maybe the cat from Hocus Pocus. Oh, God. Uh, man, that is my movie slash TV review move, uh, news. So, yeah. Meanwhile, I've got, I've got two articles here in the world of video games this week. Um, first one is Dragon Slayer is coming to Xbox Live with Kinect support in May. Which means it'll be even harder to play and defeat. <laughs> yeah. It's hard enough having to press the buttons at the right time and all of that. Now you have to move at the right time. And not everybody moves, you know, like that, you know, lightning quick and everything. You got people like me. I mean, I'm not, a, I'm not the slowest guy in the world, but you're not going to see me outrunning Sonic the Hedgehog anytime soon. <laughs> then again, I don't think any of us could, but that's neither here nor there. Nobody can rape the Grimace. No. Uh, they have a video up on Kotaku. You guys want to go check that out. And I also found... It's, it's basically a basic business, this week in video game business. And it got my attention because of the top quote of the page, which says, Nintendo has to let Mario games on non-Nintendo devices, according to a Tokyo stock analyst, talking about what Nintendo has to do to reverse its massive loss for the last year. What? No, I mean, better game. The last time. Yeah, that works. I mean, like, <laughs> like really? No, they're they they're not just a video game company. They are a console company, and, and you know what? It's just new. No. Just just last. I seem to remember the last time Mario was on a different console. Although I, you know, right. Nintendo didn't have Hell any Mario. hand except. Yeah. I think the only hand they had was say, hey, you can use our characters. And I think that was the extent of it, wasn't it? If, if my no, ape hit not research very much, then. And that was... Uh, and there he ensued. Yeah. <laughs> mm. uh. All toast is toast, toast. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Even though that is, fa- that is actually inaccurate. They told us spread. <laughs> Mario's an idiot. Yeah. Although, a statistic is showing that 10.5 million is the total number of Wii and Wii U consoles to find that Nintendo was predicting this oh, from March 2012 to March 2013. Honestly, maybe I'm a bit optimistic. I think they'll do it. Of course. I honestly do. <laughs> but, um, but that's pretty much the heights from the gaming news I've got this week. Okay, <laughs> here is whatever random nerd is. Uh, apparently, the Star Wars comics are killing off Boba Fett yet again. Oh, whoa, whoa, really? Yep. But knowing that comics, he'll be back within two days. Yeah. With superpowers. 
for crawling out of Starlight uh, Towers. Gomer, here, there's uh, one thing that Gomer didn't talk about that is actually pr pretty uh, big. Portal 2 is uh, giving us a level editor for oh. free. Oh, yeah, I heard about that. I heard about that. Yeah. That's pretty sweet. Uh, Even though I don't play Portal 2. <laughs> but I love the level editor. So. It's basically going to be Gmod for Portal. <laughs> and one thing that Mike didn't talk about, Black Dynamite is getting a sequel. Oh, yeah. I didn't really talk about sequels. But... Who's getting a sequel? Um... Uh, Black Dynamite. Black Dynamite. It's uh, it's also getting an animated TV show. Yeah, Adult Swim. Oh yeah. Speaking of animated TV shows, Axe Cop is getting one. Huh? Yep, Axe Cop a TV show. Huh. Interesting. Okay. It's most likely going to be the most awesome thing ever created. Hmm. See here, um, because you yeah, know I things need to be written by a nine-year-old in order for them to be awesome. What? Mm -hmm. That's where we've come to. We've come to terms with entertainment. Things things need to be written by a nine-year-old in order for them to be interesting. Yes. Yes. You know, it's good thing you mm -hmm. brought that up because Rose and. I actually forgot when I was going through my news, but Rosen actually pointed me to a video where this guy takes his uh, five-year-old kid throwing out all, all these Mega Man ideas and everything, essentially. Mm. Going on about like, his favorite Mega Man games and going on about like different ideas. It's like, this five-year-old... Mega Man L, L Mega Man 100. Hey, yes. hey, you know what? Better, like, I, I just day. have to say, I just have to say that that kid has stolen all my ideas. <laughs> Oh, don't worry. He stole mine, too. He stole mine, too, so... God you, kid! <laughs> the only reason people are listening to him is because he's cute and young. <laughs> I'm old and fat now, so I can no longer give out ideas as, as cute and as charming as that child. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I mean, I think, I think if we both, like, you know, temporarily castrate ourselves, raise our pitch up a bit, I think we could sound cute enough to do it. <laughs> just double oh, over the kid. Test it on Rosen first. What? <laughs> uh huh. See, he wasn't even paying attention. <laughs> I can barely hear you guys. Um. Really? Oh yeah, and uh, yeah, I, I, it's, for some reason, uh, my computer is acting like shit today. I'll fix it later. Uh. So in DVD news, uh, The Walking Dead Season 2, I believe, is getting a really cool uh, box set where it's a zombie head with the DVDs inside. Mm. Mm. Yeah. It'll go nicely with my plan of the Apes Collection head. Mm. Mm -hmm. Or the Alien, or the alien uh, Quadrilogy head. There's a lot of heads in uh, DVD box sets. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and, and in uh, comic book guys, or my new collection new of actual severed heads. <laughs> they gave uh, Lobo, <laughs> they gave the rights to direct Lobo to Brad Payton, who only has two movies to his belt. Those movies, Journey 2 and Cats and Dogs 2. Yeah, I heard about that one, too. This is going to suck. I thought there already I mean, was a Cats and Dogs 2. There was. Uh, no. This guy directed that and Journey 2, and he's doing the Lobo movie. Oh. Sure, it'll yeah, be fine. Yeah, it. There have been directors in the past who have done, like, really, really things, but they end up doing really cool things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, and there's a Batman musical now. All on YouTube. Mm -hmm. There's already a Batman in musical. A super not counting that one. Sort of, uh, 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 yeah, not counting that one. Like a full, like eleven part musical. Eleven part. Yeah, eleven I mean, ten minute parts. Okay. 
Is it huh. called Turn Off the Dark? Turn Off the Dark. I recently discovered, I recently discovered there's a uh, college-made uh, Star Fox 64 musical. Hmm. Or, or I, don't, I don't know if it was a musical. I'm going by memory. But, um, but it's a, it, is, it is a play. It is a show that this college produced and put on. And I have one last thing. Uh, anybody here a fan of Super Monkey Ball? I played it once. It was kind of wow. Funny. Look at those hands raised. <laughs> mm-hmm. Because apparently, uh, Sega in their new PS Vita uh, Super Monkey Ball is adding levels where you uh, adult levels where the backgrounds are Japanese bikini models. Because <laughs> hmm. that'll sell. Yeah. Sega is that desperate. Yeah, but yeah, that uh, Star Fox 64 musical I'm putting out in the chat and in the Skype. I found it on TV shows. Yes. And that is all I got. Well, the only news-ish thing related to music that I have is Wilson Six album, Women in Paint First, is finally on iTunes. Yay! And I bought it. Yay! And it, it was good. It's not as good as Siamese Studies, but it was good. I ah. kind of wish it was better. It, it's just so toned down and just different. I mean, it's good. Dif- different is always good. You want variety in your albums. But it's not as good as Siamese Studies. I like Siamese much better than Women in Satan Purse. Ah. Well, actually, I do have to put in one music-related news I have heard over the past couple of weeks that I've, we've been on hiatus. Uh, apparently at Coachella, they resurrected uh, yep. Tupac as a hologram. Oh not, yeah, they did. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, not really. A and hol- I've also heard. I've also heard that because of because of that, they also want to get Justin Bieber to do a duet with Elvis. What? I no. I, I did not hear that. Oh God, no! I hear that the the same people who who did the Tupac. Hologram, they want to do a hologram of uh, Kurt Cobain of Nirvana. Yeah, uh, you know, like, Carl was kidding when he suggested they bring Kurt Cobain back to life. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And I was like, whoa. Next, they're going to bring Orville Redenbacher back. Off <laughs> <laughs> board for everybody. There you go. And, and, hey, I like popcorn, so... We love yeah. popcorn. And you've been attacked by the news. And speaking of popcorn and food, let's hop into the food-related edition of Weird News. Oh, boy. Get your stomachs ready for some food. Oh, uh, let's just get some of the drink first. Uh, there's a company of vodka known as Van Gogh Vodka. And they have a peanut butter and jelly flavored vodka. Peanut butter and jelly flavored? Yep. Is there an ear in it? On my show yesterday, we I was talking with Kat, and she has she's tried a cookie dough vodka. There's cookie dough. Now we have. I I swear I blame Omega for bringing up the Skittles vodka, and now we have all this other kind of vodka out there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Van Gogh Vodka has introduced their newest and most offbeat entry to their line of more than 20 flavors, peanut butter and jelly. Uh, and, and, they, and they, uh, they say that with the fragrance of peanuts is complemented by the full fruit aroma of the raspberry. On the tongue, the rolls are reversed and the raspberry flavor is more on the focus point giving it a, a velvety texture with a hint of vanilla on the side. Hmm. And they yeah. also they also compliment on the on the task of making it. So it, is, it is challenging to transform a famous food flavor into a drink flavor. However, I think the transition is is beautiful and the flavor is intriguing. I'm certain that everyone will enjoy more than one glass of it. Uh, you know, I don't drink vodka in glasses. I drink it straight from the bottle. <laughs> like a boss. Like a yeah. boss. Yeah. I would just jam a sandwich in a vodka bottle. 
<laughs> Get in there, you stupid now. sorts. Uh, and now uh, let's talk about McDonald's. You know, oh, everyone loves their McRib, right? No. No. <laughs> I actually have not tried one. I need to try one. Most, most people. Well, there's a deep fried. Most, you, most people who we all gave a unanimous no. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I'll just say there's a deep fried McRipster out there. Deep fried. Well, basically, no. someone just bought a McRib and took it to a county fair. That's all. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> deep fried McBabies. Oh yeah. That's that's what it makes it seem like, but it's actually a sandwich in a McDonald's in Austria. Oh, they get it in Austria. You <laughs> Americans, you don't get that. You're fat enough. We need to fatten our children. And so, yeah. like, the, like the McRib, it's called a McRibster. The meat of the, of the McRibster is a processed pe pork patty shaped like a rib cage, of course. But here's where things get crazy. Instead of being slathered with sweet barbecue sauce, the special patty is breaded and deep fried. Oh. And then it gets topped with... <laughs> Uh, it's it's going to taste like death. Exactly, but they top it with bacon, pepper jack cheese, crunchy lettuce burg, iceberg lettuce, red onion, and delicious honey mustard sauce, and sweet... Even more death. And spicy and sweet chili sauce. Ugh. That's not good up until the chili sauce. I know. It's like, no thanks. I, I, I can do without the chili sauce on that one. But otherwise, it sounds good. Bacon? Honey mustard, chili sauce, is this the creation which Maybe is only that. available in Austria, genius, or insane? What's going on, Austria? Insane and genius. I think we can go with insane. <laughs> Whoever made it doesn't really have taste buds. <laughs> Apparently. Uh, but, you know, you saw that in the southern U.S., and, and people eat that up. Oh, yeah. And now let's go to the United Kingdom for some pizza. Oh, oh, what do they have? Oh, they, they, have, pizza? they have pizza with hot dog stuffed crust. Yeah, I heard yeah. about this. I also heard there's a sequel. Hot dog stuffed crust. In the Middle East, there's a pizza that's stuffed, that the crust is stuffed with miniature cheeseburgers. Oh, I was just about to get into that one next. Yeah. Oh, damn. Yeah, pretty much. So. so in the UK, they have a pizza with hot dog stuffed crust. And actually, you get a free mustard drizzle with it. So you can drizzle mustard over it. That's disgusting. No. Also, you can put some pickles and some herring on it. And also some... Also, some eggplant, that'll make it nice, and put, pour some mayonnaise all over it. I mean, it'll be delicious, man. Whoa. Yeah, you'd have, you'd have to be fucking stoned to enjoy that one, man. And Actually, I was uh, thinking more you had to be a turtle to do that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Both. There you go. But, you have to have uh, a stone, you have to be a turtle. But now, bachelors everywhere now have a new pickup line in their arsenal. Want oh, me to no. stuff your crust with my hot dog? Oh, God. No. You, could just, ah. <laughs> you could just hear No better than any of those Doctor Who pickup lines. I know. <laughs> yeah. You could just hear the no, panties no. dropping across the globe. <sighs> then immediately pulling yeah. himself back up. And grabbing some mace. And, uh... Like, yeah. Throwing a hot dog into a ca cavern. Just like, uh, Rosen mentioned... There is a pizza that has cheeseburger stuffed crusts. It's called the uh, Crown Crust Carnival. Uh, can I have a cheeseburger? <laughs> cheeseburger? Sure. Hail Pizza Hut's Royal Masterpiece, the new Crown Crust Pizza, made with perfectly grilled mini cheeseburger gems, nestled in golden crown crusts, topped with beef, fresh veggies, and drizzled with Pizza Hut's special sauce. The new cheeseburger Crown Crust Pizza. Relish a first-of-its-kind deliciousness, only at Pizza Hut. Cheeseburger pizza. Ordinarily, I love a but that's just way too much. I love me a cheeseburger. I love me a pizza. 
I don't think I should ever combine the two. So here, and it's a it's a pizza too again. It's uh, it comes studded with twelve mini cheeseburgers topped with ground beef, veggies, and special sauce. Oh wow, they turned a Big Mac into a pizza. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Next time I'll just go to Pizza Hut and then McDonald's and I'll just combine the two. <laughs> Uh, more cheaper that way, maybe. The maybe. McOrgy. <laughs> <laughs> Better than the McGangbang. Yep. Which, if you have not tried a McGangbang, you should. Because it's good. Alright, and that is the uh, food-related weird news. Ah, uh, And now we're, I'm thirsty, and we'll just get into the top ten of the podcast known as the Ten... Strange Coca-Cola flavors from around the world. Uh, knowing me, I've been to, like, if you, if you go to, like, I know there's one in Atlanta. They have, like, a Coke museum there. Or at least they did when I was there. Yeah, I think it's and, still there. Yeah, they have, like, all yeah. Cokes from around the world. You all can try. different types. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's... And I think I think they also have one at uh, Epcot, at Walt Disney World, as well. I, well, I don't know if they do anymore, but they did, at least they did when I was working there. But um, let's let's see some of these flavors. Let's see if I've tried some of these. Uh, I would say the first one they list is green tea coke. I have not tried that one. <laughs> yeah, soda should be more like fresh whole foods. Caramel colors, bubbles, and sugars aside, a cola drink should resemble simpler, more healthier beverages. That's what everyone is thinking, and only Coca-Cola would say. Which is why this flavor of coke was unleashed on the unsuspecting citizens of Japan in 2009. Of course. Well, of course it'd have to be Japan. And... Really? Land of soy sauce and Mothra! Yeah, so there's a... <laughs> of course there's videos included with these drinks, like commercials and, and reactions, so this video attached to this entry is... Okay, today we're trying to uh, taste the new Coca-Cola green, green tea, tea flavor. With no and carry. our two victims are... The other victim is uh, Ayush. Hi. Oh, how's that new green tea flavor? Okay, I'll try this. It must be awesome. Green tea is very famous in Japan. Awesome. The later part yeah. tastes like... Oh, wastewater? <laughs> wastewater. Oh, Hi. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Oh my god. But this, I want to throw what? it away. Throw it away? Yeah. Uh, it's not going that's a well, great it? advertisement. It tastes like sewer water. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's cold. <laughs> Can you some green tea uh, coke? But uh, I don't know about the rest of you guys, but I don't drink any kind of pop because it's healthy. I drink it because it tastes good. <laughs> exactly. Uh, let's see. The next one is vitamin coke. Vitamin coke. Vitamin Coke. And then you take it away. Try new Diet Coke Plus. It has all the great refreshing taste of Diet Coke with added vitamins and antioxidants. Diet Coke Plus, an easy way to goodness. Uh, let's see. Along with those same lines, but without the leafy taste, Coca-Cola Light Plus is a version of Coke that is infused with vitamins and anti antitoxinants. I can't talk today. Antioxidants. I can't read today. I'm sorry. I'm known for this on the <laughs> podcast. Apparently, yeah. it's for those moments when you really want a soda, but feel like you should actually be having a healthy beverage that contains vitamins and nutritional value. This is or take a bottle of Coke and just dip some uh, Flintstone chewable tablets into it. Yeah. Okay, I'm tempted to go try that. <laughs> oh, jeez. Just pour them in and watch them fizz. Yes. Uh, next one on the list is Raspberry Coke. Well, that seems okay. As far as we can tell, it, but... this flavor of Coke is only available in the new and randomly placed in limited supply Coke 
Freestyle machines. Coke freestyle machines. What the hell? If you've been in New Zealand for a brief period in 2005, you can actually buy some. Ah, New Zealand. Coke freestyle machines. Is that... Wait a minute. Is that like where you just put the cup in and you just like choose everything on the screen with the buttons and everything? And I have and they no just, idea. That's the whole one thing. I think I have one no, of those. Just put money out. You just put money in it and it spits out whatever the hell it wants to give you. Uh, well, according to the gang at SeriousEats.com, the raspberry flavor is better than Cherry Coke. Hmm. I guess they... All right, uh, let's see. Next one. Oh, you got raspberry Coke. Now we got orange Coke. Just yeah. get a goddamn right. <laughs> Another flavor <laughs> of Coca-Cola you only be able to get out of the freestyle machine if you're in the U.S. It's Orange Coke. In 2007, after Lime Coke and Lemon Coke was released, Coca-Cola wanted to tap the citrus market again, this time with Orange. Hmm. Hey, baby, let me, hey, citrus, let me tap your market again. <laughs> they say... Oh, yeah. They say it went over well, but the responses can't have been that great because you can only get it in uh, Poland and Russia now. Oh, wow. Lativa as well. Lativa, Poland, and Russia. Uh, let's see. Uh, next one is Black Cherry Vanilla Coke. Black Cherry, Black vanilla, cherry vanilla, vanilla Coke. We got it together, didn't we? Black cherry, smooth, silky vanilla. We've definitely got our thing together, don't we, baby? New black cherry vanilla Coke and Diet Coke. Isn't that nice? We got it together. I mean, really, when you really sit and think about it, isn't it really, really nice? Mm -hmm. Getting together with family and friends, and that's the perfect time to share a little laughter and love over new black cherry vanilla Coke and Diet Coke. Yeah, I've seen those in movie theaters here. It, I don't know if they're still there, but there have been cases of that. Let's hmm. see. How many flavors can you put into one can of Coke? Ch cherry Coke isn't enough. Vanilla Coke's not enough. Nine. <laughs> Coca-Cola takes it all the way with black cherry vanilla Coke. There are so many flavors in this Coke that Coca-Cola can't even come up with a broad description of these tastes. You get whatever you get. Just don't get confused with your cough syrup. Oh, dear. Because that's a great ad. <laughs> <laughs> don't get confused with something that tastes awful that's meant to cure you. Oh, boy. Black cherry vanilla Coke. You won't know it's not cough medicine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. Oh, and we and we we talked about these products before in the uh, 20th episode with bacon. Now we got bacon coke. Bacon coke. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's awful. Oh. That's uh, horrible, horrible, awful. I'm pretty sure it'll burn the throat on the way down. Uh, this one. Yep. This one popped up on the internet a while back, and frankly, we're not entirely sure that it's real. Some posters claim. Coke tested market the salty sweet dream drink in certain markets, but we're not gonna see. Uh, Didn't Patton Oswalt have a joke about this? I don't know. Wait, that was bacon flavor, right? A diet soda laced with bacon flavor w would no doubt have caused health experts slash bacon ish. Hold it, hold it, hold it. If you have to use the term laced with, don't drink it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, pretty sure this was made back in the great uh, Denny's bacon boom in 2010. Uh, which I barely missed. Damn it! I wanted to try one of those bacon alias. And they uh, got rid of them. for no other reason. Yeah, they they don't have them anymore. I wanted to try one and feel myself eating a whole one because Nella couldn't eat the whole one, and I wanted to show her up. Well, okay. Here's some good news because Burger King has their own bacon Sunday. I'm going to Burger King. <laughs> they call it Bacon Apocalypse. <laughs> bacon op bacon. Say that again. Bacon Apocalypse. <laughs> bacon Apocalypse. Bacon Apocalypse. Okay. And uh, let's see the next one. Ah, the ever clever Black Coke. Yeah. Well. <laughs> oh, black. 
that one's not so obscure. Well, once it's you go just, black, you never go back. And the thing is with Coke Black or Bloke Black it's coffee. Coke, it's the coffee essence of the Coke. Yeah. Hmm. Brad Beach do it. Yeah, I know. But uh, if you're in Bulgaria, That's... Canada, Czech Republic, France, Slovakia, or Spain, and feel a bit sluggish, you might want to pop this in the corner store and get yourself Coke Black. Hmm. And yet over here, all we get are five-hour energy drinks. <laughs> if we want that amount of caffeine without having to drink actual coffee. Okay. Okay, well, so... Okay, they, have, okay, they do have NOS. But... Okay. But I Okay? <laughs> oh, okay, soda? What the hell is this? Okay, soda? What? Back in 1993... How is it? It's Coke. terrible. <laughs> no, it's okay. Uh, Coke... <laughs> <laughs> Coke attempted... That's, that's a joke I was trying to avoid. Attempt to connect... Okay, in 93, Coke attempted to connect with this... Uh, with the uh, disaffected members of Generation X through a soda that was just as snarky and over it as they were. With a trendy can designed by graphic artists Charles Burns and Daniel Crowe's a that's beyond a, dumb a, a catchphrase things are going to be okay in a vaguely citrusy taste. Okay, soda was unleashed in a few markets around the country. The soda even come came with a manifesto with phrases like "What's the point of okay?" Well, what's the point of anything printed on the can? So the, their response is, Why are you here? Why are any of us here? Whoa. I hate Whoa. those guys. <laughs> yeah, the fuck. Okay, let's see. We're almost done here. We're at number nine. Uh, uh cit Citra Coke? Citra Coke. Citra Coke. What, hmm. you may ask? Does it have citra in it? I don't, I don't know. What you may ask is Citra. We aren't sure, but it seems to be like a combination of the colors green and yellow and fruits that resemble lemons and limes. So Fresca, basically. We are guessing it's a citrusy flavor of Coke since we're not in Mexico, Japan, New Zealand, Bosnia, or Hans Gazvala. We are unable to test our theory. <laughs> like, I hate these country names. Where the hell is Hans Gazvala? Oh, fuck. I think he means Honduras. You look this up on Google Maps. All right, where is Hans Bailao? <laughs> what the fuck did you even say? I don't know. I fucking don't. Hans. Go sleep now. Fuck you. <laughs> I'm not uh, sleeping. Right I just can't fight. pronounce things. Hans. I think we have the title for this episode. Yeah, I think I... Yes. yes. Oh, Herzegovina, or Herzegovina. Herzegovina. See, I can't pronounce shit. That is quite fail. Number 10 is the obvious new Coke. Hi, we're New Edition, and we're here to introduce the great new taste of Coca-Cola, the taste of today. Yeah, Coke is it. Come on, check it out now. It's got a new taste. It's a definite wow. A great event. It's, it's, it's here. A big smash. New Coke and old Coke, though. I don't. It's new. <laughs> yeah, it's new, not old. It's new. Uh, well, if I finish up a bottle of Coke and I toss it away, I get, I get a new one. That's technically a new Coke. Yes, I had. Because I, I had a new tweet. Coke. Come watch it. We can talk about Hansbara. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, new Coke. Not much to say there, because this can't be a list un of unsuccessful and strange Coke players without mentioning New Coke, one of the biggest products and marketing disasters of all time. Yeah. 
To compete with Pepsi, Coca-Cola changed their recipe to match the Pepsi, Pepsi sweeter flavor, and they alienated their loyal fan base by completely invalidating their choice to drink Coke in the first place. There was a mess... Was so bad that Futurama made a joke about it 15 years later. Mm -hmm. There was a massive backlash, so Coca-Cola quickly put the beverage we knew and loved back on the shelves as Coke Classic, and they pulled a new Coke all together several years later. Although you can still find it if it if you are end up in the America Samoa, where it took off for some reason. God damn it! America Samoa. It has Hansbra again. <laughs> You know nothing is <laughs> the That's the ten strange go go <laughs> players from around the world. Yep. Any closing thoughts to end the podcast? Mm. I I was kind of surprised. Oh, you said strange Coke <laughs> products. I, I I started to think when you think of Coke products around the world, at least when I do, I think of one Coke product out of out of uh, Italy. It's called Beverly. The stuff is nasty. Hmm. And when we went to the Coke Museum in Atlanta, when I was in high school, they basically took a couple of us aside and they said, hey, you know what? You know, to prove your manhood type thing, you have to be able to like drink it without really grimacing or, or, gro or grossing out over it. So me and another guy, we, we got ourselves like a little sample cup of Beverly. We looked at each other like, oh, shit, what are we getting into? Toasted each other, downed it. I'm sitting there, I'm like, okay, it's gross, but okay, whatever. He's over on the other side, just sitting there like, oh, ah, 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 and he's like totally freaking out and shit. I'm thinking, yeah, you may be taller than me, being pulled, but uh, I'm the bigger man. <laughs> uh, but seriously, that stuff is nasty. Yeah. Totally nasty. Uh, that concludes... This episode of Tech at the Awesome. I'm your host, What's Mike. I think it's episode 25. Oh, Hansbara, that is the place <laughs> we're at. Oh, Hansbara, the, the place where we are at. Hansbara. <laughs> The place that we are in. Oh, Hansbara, we salute you because you're that. <laughs> With that, you've been attacked by the awesome. Goodbye. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh. oh, man. That was great. That was great. <laughs>